for Leslie Miska. She's on a much needed two week vacation in sunny Florida. So I hope she's, uh, she flew out today and she was supposed to be there today. So um, I'm not gonna even contact her until her two weeks are done and over with. So I told her, even if everything was on fire, I was not gonna contact her, so. Um, welcome and I do have a, uh, some agenda items to go over with you today. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that we did have a, a production deploy over the weekend. It started on Friday evening about five o'clock and there were 23 defects that were fixed. Not all of them were related to PCP or SIP, but there were a large majority of them. So I just wanna go down through the details of what was fixed. Um, some of them that we still see some issues with today um, and we'll get into that. So the first one is the active PCP plans. Um, so most of them should be showing as active yes now. The ones that are active should be showing as yes, and you should be able to revise from them. The, we have had some reports though throughout the day that there are some that are still not showing as active. So when you go to look at the PCPs in um, Evergreen, you're seeing that where it's supposed to say active yes, they're still saying all no. So we're going to look at those on a case-by-case -case basis if you could email us at evergreen.dhhs at main.gov with that information, and we would look for you to email the person ID and the form ID that you believe should be active. That way we can research and try and see what might be going on, troubleshoot, um, and try and get you moving on that plan. Lisa, can I just interject real quick and say Absolutely. don't replicate if you've already sent that information through your liaison or myself, you don't have to send it again. Perfect. Thank you, Nancy. And just so you're aware, we have escalated this up to FEI or vendor, and it is an urgent matter. Um, we expected them all to be uh, remediated with the production deploy, but it didn't happen. So we're not sure what happened and why those few didn't get picked up. So we're working on it, they're working on it, and hopefully we can have a resolve quickly. One of the other items that was deployed over the weekend was the ability to search for providers in the SIP invitation. Um, so before the production deploy, you would have to remove the service and then add it back in again. You don't no longer have to do that. You should be able to do the provider invitation without removing that service. Another enhancement was to program management. Um, and the enhancement is the ability to create a non-standard re reconsideration packet when a standard application exists. So we, we weren't able to do that, now you can. Um, the comprehensive assessment, there was an oversight in the button to add a need to the need for health and wellness, um, home and housing and community engagement. It was missing, so that is there now. So you should be able to fulfill those requirements within the comprehensive assessment. Um, on the PCP print, there was duplication of the description of scope, uh, the completion requirement in, oh no, sorry, I got mis mixed up. The description of scope and provider no longer is repeating itself multiple times. It was quadrupling itself. So now it's only there once on the PCP print. Uh, the HCBS rights modification addendum, under the completion requirements for that addendum, there was the summary of review. We've removed that. That's no longer a completion requirement. It's just a summary. You don't have to complete that in order to complete the HCBS rights mod addendum. Uh, for the PCP change reason of change in rights and supports or modifications, now, once you've chosen that, it will display the HCBS rights modification. And it will allow the provider assignments in the completion requirements. So you should be all set with that one. Uh, the BI care monitor role is available to you in the staff assessments tab now, or staff assignment tab now. It's late in the day. Apparently, I'm getting all tongue tied. <laughs> Um, so that's available now, the BI care monitor to assign under staff assignments. So those are all of the production deploys that you and your roles will be able to see 
within Evergreen Production. As of today, you probably have some questions about them, so we'll get to the Q&A in a few minutes. Um, so we were on Friday's call, and we were, and that was that's with the agency support people, and there were a lot of uh, conversations around being notified um, around SIPs. So just a reminder that the notifications aren't working still, and just be sure to notify the provider um, if you are inviting them and that the SIP is available for them to, to enter their information. So there were a, a few people that were saying that they weren't getting notified. So we just want to give that reminder that hopefully within the next couple of weeks, our notifications will be working. I have my fingers crossed on that one, but I don't know how soon it will be. Um, I feel like I went through that way faster than Leslie does, but... Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up for Q&A because I'm sure that's really where the meat is of this meeting. So um, let's go ahead and do that. I see some. Move this. I have to move my screens in order to get the Q&A. Oh, we don't have any questions. That's great. <laughs> so Nancy, um, while we're waiting, do you have anything for the group or anything yeah, that you might want to bring up? For sure. I was just going to, if people are trying to get questions in or whatever, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I know you mentioned um, that people can go in and choose their um, servant supports now. Uh, just a reminder for people, SIPs will not populate correctly if you don't make sure the appropriate services are linked to the goals. So, and we were talking about this earlier, we just want to give people a heads up that sometimes there are, um, there are duplicate services uh, that come across and display for your, for your goals. So you might have two home supports uh, um, services because you, ended one and started another or something and both of those home supports will display as an option for those goals and at this point we're saying that you should just move both of them over to ensure that the home support provider SIP has the goals in there because um, it does not identify which one is the accurate uh, service uh, the accurate service in that moment we know about it it's kind of a squirrely little situation and um but that's probably the best way to go about it right now is to pull so i i've looked at a couple today and there were some duplicate community support services and and we know that somebody pulled the wrong community support over and so to probably rectify that for right now just move them all over and the appropriate person will get the the goals but not not all services only if you have duplicate services so don't pull shared living over for community sports but pull all your community sports over for community support so that it will end up on their SIP. I don't know if that made sense, but I just know that's something that's going on right now. And it's really important that those services and supports are linked to goals so that the SIPs are showing up the way they need to be. Thank I you, Nancy. I questions now, so. Yeah, um, the first is from Chris DeFeo. Um, the question about my SIP reports is that people are still not linked to the report. Three different use it, use, uses, users have three different lists of people, but since we cover for each other, they should be all the same list. Is this being fixed? I'm not quite sure. Um, Chris, this may be just something independent that we might need to look into a little bit further. So if you could just send us the question about my super courses that people are still not linked to the report. Hmm. I'm I'm a little foggy of what that is as well. And I know there's that SIP report that we put into the into the work, I mean into the help center. Yes. That, and it says to go and pull that SIP report to see what you have for SIPs to be completed. I've guided people that if that's not working well, then to just go look for the person in because notifications aren't working so well. And when a case manager notifies you that there's a SIP, 
I would just go right into the person and look. But um, yes, and and so Chris, it's not working well. Yeah, and Chris, if that doesn't answer your question, could you actually email evergreen um, dot dhhs at main dot gov and with a little bit more specific information, and then we can have somebody reach out to you to see if we might be able to provide one on one assistance with you. Uh, Wanda, Lindsay, will these fixes be sent out in writing? Yes, they'll be in the communication that we're sending out at the end of this week, and we'll also finalize that and put them in the channel. David Briva, rights modification and addendum signatures is always a completion requirement when submitting a plan as completed. How is this completed for individuals with no rights modifications? Nancy. Sure, well, uh, give it a shot. So um, we have been able to work with people individually and get through that by moving through. So when you get to that page, there are some arrows at the bottom. Instead of doing save and uh, continue or whatever, if you move the arrows over, there'll be a question that you answer it would be yes, yes, and then you put a date in it, and that should get you past it. And it will show as it's completed um, uh, in your completion requirements, but then when you set the plan to complete, it will come back as a red circle. And people have asked before, does that matter? And it doesn't, it just, it's showing, um, that has been sh turned off, that rights mod mod modification process has been turned off. So it does show as a requirement after you put the plan to complete, if you're still struggling with getting through that process by using the arrows over and there are two specific questions that you answer yes, yes, and then you put a date in there, if that's not getting you to where you need to, send that email into um, uh, evergreen.dhhsma.gov and we'll reach out to you and we'll work with you. See if we can't do it. Sometimes we run into issues that we can't, but give it a try and let us know. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Nancy. Um, Chris has a question. We have three PAs we are waiting for with effective dates that have already passed. Thank you, Emily, for working on these. I am wondering if the following issues could be the problem and where we should go from here. One person's SIPs did not migrate over from EIS. One person had paper SIPs done. And since we can't see anything uploaded, I don't know if it is there or not, or if this is the issue. One person's CCM has not changed the pending provider selection status, even though we are the selection and the SIP has already been completed. We have reached out to the CCM several times and this hasn't changed. I'm suspecting this may be why the PA is not done. Is there anything more we can do to move these along? That's hey, Lisa, it's Donna. Um, Emily's yeah. having some computer issues right now and is trying to log on. So um, I just want to say, Chris, um, you may want to email the resource coordinator Odes inbox for that. Um, to get to Emily and to ask for some of that. Um, I'm not as familiar with the PAs and the things that may be holding it up. Um, or if you hang on, she may be able to answer um, when she's able to log on. I will say that um, what's happening a lot for PAs is we are getting notifications when the PCP is effective. So the PCP effective date is today. We get the notification today to enter the PA. Uh, if it's a change in service, we get a notification when the PCP is moved in complete status. And so we're working to get to those as quickly as possible. That's all I have right now. Thank you, Donna. Um, Christina Mower, uh, they have a few PCP revisions that the CCM was able to complete all the requirements and move the plan to complete status. Yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> the CCM is now working on a revision of that plan and not all of the information is carrying over. Example, new key milestones, risks, and they need to redo the completion requirements. How do we ensure all information carries over? Um, I believe there's a ticket in for the fact that those key milestones are dropping off. So we understand right now it's an issue and it's a little extra work to keep the process moving. Um, there is a ticket. I'm not sure of the status. We maybe all look that look at that, check with Udea and see, but we are aware of that. I do recall that ticket. 
So we, we do have that ticket and we are working those tickets as quickly as we possibly can. Um, we yeah. understand it's extra work for the case manager at this point. Um, we understand that you guys are it's extra work for everybody. Um, it's a lot of work right now. We're all working a lot. All right, Cynthia Talbot. We are not seeing the correct address to link in Evergreen for a client who is moving from res one residence within the same agency to another. The provider says they are able to bill if we use the old address, but that does not seem correct. That's correct. <laughs> we should be using the, the correct address. Um, so we can't invite for the SIP and the plan is stuck. Should we put the incorrect address in just to move the plan along? Um, I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't think that's a, that's a good practice, but uh, we should definitely, is the address just not in the system? I guess we need to do a little bit of research on this because if the address is just not in the system, then we need to connect that. If it's in MIMS, then we can go ahead and connect those and get that taken care of. Donna, go ahead. Um, one of the things that Emily has recommended is if um, you can use the NPI plus three for the location, it makes it a lot easier to find. If that's still not working, um, we can either try to work with the paper SIP um, and then enter it manually or um, figure out if there's something we can figure out quickly, but do not ever use an old address, please. Thanks. This this also, Lisa, may be one of those situations where we have, people have been giving us that location information and we've been able to send it on. I know I've sent a couple on to you. And you've been able yes. to do something with it. Now I think I would send it to somebody else here, but I um, they want to just... send it through the evergreen at DHHS at main.gov. Exactly. So the details around that, then we might be able to assist. Yes, most definitely. I would say to send the an email to evergreen.dhhs at main.gov with the information of the correct address, um, with the street address, the city, and the NDHS3. If, if possible, then that way we could go ahead and get that uh, moving along for you. Oh, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Chris. Chris says, I think you all are doing a remarkable job given the current struggles. Thank you all. Well, thank you all. You guys have been all very yeah. patient with us and I, I really appreciate that. And uh, we're working just as hard as we can to make things go a little bit smoother for you. Uh, Christina Moer, uh, CCM used the e-signature feature and was able to capture client signature in Evergreen. We can see it when inside of the document in Evergreen. When you download it to save and print, the signature shows as blank. This is a known issue. Well, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> I don't think we knew that issue. Um, this is the first I've heard of that, but I'm going to take this and have somebody. Well, can she send us the uh, person ID, home ID, so we could take a look at it? That would be great evergreen.dhhs at main.gov email with uh, this situation and a person ID form ID. Please and thank you. That'd be awesome. Then that way we can research. Um, and if it is uh, a global issue, we'll definitely um, put in a ticket and hopefully get that fixed. Francis says, where do we, where do Emily, case managers find it? That one, Lisa. Okay. I'm typing. Awesome. I couldn't even see that. Sorry. No worries. We all work <laughs> together here. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right. Lisa Saran, would it be possible to have a list of known issues that have had tickets created for FBI? Oh, <laughs> just to avoid bugging you all <laughs> that you're already aware of. No, definitely bug us with questions. <laughs> um, we, there are a lot of little bugs and little features that have, that we're trying to get fixed. So we, and I think Leslie's talked to you about this. We have um, like a scoring way in, in our ticket system. We have urgent issues and that would be something that would be present, preventing like PCPs moving forward, things around the uh, prior authorizations, all of those would be urgent. Um, and then we have important, which are, are right up there as well, but, um, and then we go to medium and then low. But so I think we have, like 300-ish issues, which isn't bad for actually uh, go live, I, I don't think. Um, I was here when EIS went live and we had way more issues when we went up with that. So we're getting there. Sounds like someone's playing Yahtzee. 
<laughs> it's my puppy. She's playing with a toy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> She's so cute. Because her puppy is playing with a toy and making all kinds of. My apologies. I tried to keep her quiet, but it didn't work. It's cute. Now that I know it's come from a puppy. <laughs> I debated, you know, <laughs> leave her out or put her in her kennel, but made the wrong choice there. <laughs> I'm trying to think oh, if there's don't... anything else that we can update people on. Yeah, I don't see anything else in the Q and A. So, hmm. well, we can go ahead and adjourn for today. Um, and if you have anything, definitely please bring it to our attention through evergreen.dhhs at maine.gov. And then we can take take it from there and see if we can help you troubleshoot and go through your issues that you're having with Evergreen. Um, I do. I hope everybody is feeling a little bit more comfortable with Evergreen as we go forward. I we're working as hard as we can to fix things and um, make it so that it's a little bit smoother for everybody. Looks like I'm going to be able to give everybody, everybody back 37 minutes. So that we all could use it, I'm sure. Thank you guys so much. And I apologize about the noise in the background. Oh my goodness, Lisa. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.